like I said before, my only gimmick here is that I can't sing, I can't play an instrument, so I read short stories and really bad poetry. Uh, some context for this one, oh, thank you. Some context for this one, I learned recently that the giant heads, the Moe on Easter Island, uh, they moved them by having basically a team of people on each side using ropes, and they pulled them from side to side so that the giant busts would basically just walk to where you needed to go. Now, it sounds like a great system right up until they realize that once it drops, you can't pick it back up. So that's why there are so many just laying along the side of the road. And I personally think that's hilarious, that you could spend years putting forth that much effort, and then some douchebag just drops it immediately, and you're like, oh, gotta start again. So here's a little story about it. Uh, hasty, brief, not great. That's what you guys are stuck with. I'm stuck with it, too. It's okay. I love it. <laughs> My favorite method, and maybe arrest, just diving right into the middle of the action. Hey. Hey, be careful, it's tipping, shouted Atamu, reeling backwards and grasping at the rope he had been clinging to. It snapped away and ran after their brand new Maui as it toppled, the subsequent rumble he was, unfortunately, getting used to. The perfectly carved forehead of the thing had effectively wedged itself into the dirt, and Atamu threw his hands up, out, and back up again in flustered exclamation. We just finished him, just today. He hadn't even lost the last of his baby dirt before you let your rope go on him. Damn it, Tumu! Tumu wrangled his end of the rope in defense and wrinkled his nose. If Atamu had known just how numb his knuckles had gotten, he wouldn't be angrily throwing his own about so much. Tumu, Tumu, listen to me, okay? Atamu had calmed down a notch now that he felt the eyes of the forty or so other workers around him, none with the sparkle or gleam about their recently deceased project. Tumu, listen. Okay, okay, I'm listening. Tumu, we failed last year. Okay, now, I'm not naming names. Name the name and let him have it for once, interjected Make Make, stamping his foot. This has gone on for long enough. Every year, every fucking year, we work and we strive and we sweat just to make the perfect Maui, and every year you've been with us, you have let her drop. Every year. The spittle he lobbed with each word fell just toward of Atamu's own face, and he wiped his lower lip aggressively, continuing to grovel. Thank you, Make Maki, said Atame, bringing his, Atamu, bringing his palms up in more reasonable acknowledgement. Now, Tumu, I like you. I do. But the third time's a charm. Three strikes and you're out. Whatever a strike is. I think it's time we have you sit still for a while. Tumu's spine snapped straight with realization and immediate fear at that last statement. He couldn't mean it. Tumu may have dropped a few Maui, sure, but there's no way he had dropped enough to deserve that yet. Look, Atamu, you really don't have to go that far. It won't happen again. I got the bad luck out of my system. It was bad blood or something. The Europeans are trying some great new leech techniques that the West is raving about. Or at least they were the last time anyone brought news to us, but things can only have gotten better for them, right? That's the last Maui drop, Atamu. I swear. We should have done this the first time, spat Make Maki as he and two others wrestled Tumu into submission, ignoring his continued pleas for alternative medicines. Atamu watched with a sad gratification as they hauled the kicking Tumu towards the carving block they had just began their trek from. Tumu thrashed with increasing desperation as he was wedged into a large groove at the base of the stone. The men who previously walked the Maui now wriggled the stone half that size over Tumu's quivering legs, demanding his body to face the un uncarved stone before him. Sit still. This will be over for you a lot quicker, I promise, murmured Atamu, brushing past. The workers took their places around him, brandishing their various tools and Tumu wailed as he saw his likeness carved over the days, the shame of a Maui dropper too much to bear. Tumu kept his eyes shut as much as possible, but he couldn't shut out Maki Make's chortle halfway through day three. I hope you know, you're assigned to walk your own Maui to the shore. If you drop it, you won't leave until you've picked it up. Tumu simply stared at him in horrified awe. Within a year, his face would be posted up with all the others, face to the sea and placed for every traveler to see what shame these Maui droppers had brought their people. And now Tubu would suffer the same reprehensible punishment. He knew what he had to do. He was a Maui dropper, all right, and he had one chance to keep himself off that shore. He had one more Maui to see hit the dirt. <laughs> Thank you for that one, How much time do I have left? 